In this video, I'm going to give you a basic usage overview of Posh C2. This will involve tasks such as installation of Posh C2 on Kali Linux. And we will also use how to create an implant and how to run modules and commands on the implant. So let's begin. So this is the Posh C2 GitHub repository. And here they have given the installation instructions for Kali Linux. Posh C2 provides two options for installation. One is on Kali hosts and other is Docker based installation. In this video, we look at the Kali host installation. So to install Posh C2 on Kali Linux, it's very simple. There is just one command that you have to give and it's this. And if you want to change the default directory, which is opt Posh C2, you can just specify an option hyphen S after this command and the directory location. For the purposes of this video, we are going to keep this default directory. So let me just copy this command and do note that it says that this command needs to be run from an elevated prompt. So let's run this command and to do that, I'll write sudo and then paste that command and press enter. For some reason, this command did not work with sudo. So we are going to try it from a root prompt. First, let me clear the screen and now I'll write sudo and then the password. And now we are in the sudo prompt. So here I just paste the command and press enter. Now this may take some time depending on your internet connection. So I'm going to pause here and I'll be back once Posh C2 has installed. So Posh C2 has finally finished installing. And one of the first things that we need to do from this prompt is to run Posh config and configure the IP address for this machine. So I'll run Posh hyphen config and it opens the configuration file in Vim editor. And here you will need to change this IP address and these ports if you wish to. So let's do that. And to get into edit mode in Vim, you need to press I and then just delete this IP address. And the IP address for this machine is 192.168.3.46. And we'll keep the port as 8888. We leave it as it is for now. We don't need a PostgreSQL database. We'll use SQLite. And for payload comms, again, we we'll need to configure the IP address. So again, we'll write 192.168.3.46. And port is 8888. Rest, everything looks fine for now. Now just press escape colon WQ to save this file and press enter to close it. Now we'll open under the tab in terminal and we'll write sudo posh server. And as you can see that it has launched the posh server. And along with that, it has generated various types of payload. You can see C sharp payloads, DLL payloads for reflected DLL and then there are shell code payloads in form of .bin files. Then there is also a base64 encoded PowerShell command that you can just execute on your target and it will send back a connection to the implant receiver. And you can find the information about other sorts of payloads such as JavaScript, VBScript, .NET to JS, C Sharp here. And it also provides you various mechanisms or various commands through which you can run these payloads. For this video, we are going to use a simple C sharp dropper payload, which is this. So we need to copy it in our web root. I'll just copy this and open a new terminal and write sudo cp and then paste and then the path to web root, which is var www slash html slash in fact let's run this command again and reduce the file name a bit so that it is easier to download it on a target machine and now i'll write sudo chown hyphen r www data var www html 
to change the permissions of this file. So now the C# -sharp dropper is hosted on our Kali Linux machine and on the target machine we can download it via wget command. Here I have a PowerShell shell sent back by netcat and on this machine we are going to download the dropper executable and it will send an implant connection back to the implant receiver. But before that we need to run the implant receiver so we'll switch back to our posh c2 window and here we'll just write sudo and posh when starting posh it will ask you for your username you can enter any value on this it need not be your kali username so i'm going to enter yks and now if i go back to my server window in the bottom we'll see that it says yks logged on so this is basically just a username to keep track of user sessions within posh c2 environment so this is the implant receiver window here you will see a list of all implants that you have gathered through your redeeming exercise and if you want to refresh this window just press enter and it will refresh to show you any implants that might have registered in the meantime. So now that our implant receiver is up and running let's go back to our target shell and download the c -sharp dropper executable. As you can see that has downloaded the C-Sharp dropper executable for POS C2 and now I'll just execute it and if I go back to my implants window now and press enter to refresh so we are not getting any connections back let's see why let's go to our server window and see if there are any errors so this error happens because POS C2 is not able to find a Python module named crypto now usually it gets resolved by installing PyCryptoDome I tried that but I'm still getting this error so I checked the issues page of POSC2 and here if you see it says that it works with Python 3.7 but for some reason it's not working with Python 3.8. To resolve this problem you need to run these commands in your Kali host and then it says that after doing these steps the POSC2 frameworks works again. The link for this page and these commands are available in the description below. Alright, I am back so that took me some time to fix but now the issue is resolved and a Posh C2 server and Posh C2 implant receiver are good to go. So let's go back to our target shell and just run drpr.exe and this time we should see an implant. We wait a bit and then press enter. And as you can see that a new C sharp implant has connected and if I press enter here we'll see a new implant with PID 5704 and the refresh interval is 5 seconds. The username is user.ind02 and the domain name is ind and the machine name is foothold2 which is a 64 bit machine and this is a C sharp implant. To interact with this implant you can just write this implant ID which is 2 and it will take you into the interactive mode for this implant as you can see here. The very first thing I usually do is to run bypass AMSI so this will disable all AMSI mitigations for this particular session and if you go on the server window it will say that the module has been loaded successfully and this is the output generated by this module and it says that AMSI scan buffer patched with bypass. Great. Now if you want to see a C sharp specific list of modules that you can run on target machine just type list modules and you will see a list of all modules that are available out of the box in POSH C2 that you can simply load and run any command from within these modules. So let's load Sharp View, which is a C Sharp adaptation of PowerView module. And to do that, we'll simply write load module sharpview.exe. And now, if you go back to the server, it says that module has been loaded successfully. And this was the command that we issued. The command structure for Sharp View is similar to PowerView. The only difference is while you are running Sharp View through PowerC2 you'll need to write sharp view first to get net user
and as you can see that it has run this command and has listed information about all users available in this particular domain. Similarly, you can run other modules. There is there is Sharp Hound, which is a C Sharp adaptation. Then there is Safety Cats and Safety Dump, through which you can dump either process or hashes. And if you want to see what kind of commands you can run using this console, you can just type help and it will give you a list of commands that you can execute. For example, if you want to run any PowerShell command, you'll just need to prepend it with sharp PS and then the PowerShell command. And if you want to load any PowerShell module for this session, you can just type the command PS low and the PowerShell module. Now to see a comprehensive list of all modules available in POS C2, you need to go back to the select implant command line and run list modules here. And this will give you a list of all PowerShell and C sharp modules available in POS C2. So let's load the power up PowerShell module. We'll again go into the interactive mode with our implant by giving the implant ID here. And to load the PowerShell module, we write the command PS low and then the PowerShell module name. In this case, it is power up, not PS1. And if you go back to the server window, and you'll see that two commands were issued. One was load module PS1. So when you use PS low, it automatically loads the PowerShell module. And then using the PS low command, it loads the power up PowerShell module. And as you can see that both of these modules have been loaded successfully. So now let's run the power up module and to do that, we'll just write sharp PS and invoke all checks. And you can see the output of power up in the server window. Similarly, using sharp PS, you can run any PowerShell command as we discussed. So if I run system info and then go to the server window, So here you can see that system info PowerShell command was run and the output is produced here. Now by default, this implant will remain active as long as this process is active. So in case it is killed or the machine is rebooted, you will not see any response from this particular implant. To make this implant persistent to process kill or a machine reboot, you will have to employ some of the persistent techniques available in POS C2. This is something we'll cover in a later video. Now to kill an implant, you can just write kill implant and press enter. And it will ask you if you are sure if you want to terminate the implant ID2. We'll say yes. And then we'll go back. And here you can see that now no implants are running. And a PowerShell shell has been returned back to us. So this was a very basic usage of POS C2. It is capable of doing much more and this is something we'll cover in our later videos. If you have any questions or queries regarding what you have seen so far, do let me know in the comments or you can reach out to me on Twitter at, at the rate yakshas443.